this is Tabula Rasa, and we're going to be talking about male gaze and art. Okay, so let's start out with this. Do you have a problem with this? Or this? Or this? Or how about this? What makes all these so different? Or is there any difference at all? Sex and art has been intertwined for as long as humans could draw in caves. Literally. Now, we have a problem today with art, and it's not the problematic parts that you usually hear about. It's rather with the people who determines, or rather cries loudly through the social media, about what is acceptable. Basically, people who tell you what to like and why it's okay, or vice versa. Now, we see this a lot within the comic book community. That certain depictions aren't okay, whether it's cover art, stories, or even the overall message that people read into it. And here's the thing, and it's not just the SJWs that do it. The counter SJWs do it too. It goes like this. A person on the internet may say that this is problematic. Another person counters that the first person doesn't understand the first person says that you are perpetuating a problem. The second person says you're ruining the medium because you don't have any experience in it. And, you know, so on and so forth. Teams form, battle lines are drawn, and many, many hurtful comments are said from both sides. So, how do we figure out which side to take? Who is right? And here's the thing. The answer is... You need to figure this out on your own because everybody has a different line of acceptable conduct. But to help, because that's what I like to do, usually the side that brings the most receipts is most credible, which means they cite their sources. And if we can find out their source of information comes from someone who is controversial due to being an extremist or perpetuating an agenda, or perhaps they take things out of context and, and base their information from outdated sources, we know that their credibility isn't as strong. Now, one should take note that they should be twice as critical for the side they favor versus the side they don't. As you want to make sure you're not the side that's holding the hot potato of mistakes. So... Continuing on topic, let's take Laura Mulvey, for example. Okay, And the reason we talk about Laura Mulvey is she's being cited a lot lately by YouTubers and whatnot and political commentators and social commentators about her views and the male gaze. So let's start off with the academic thing and explore her credentials. She is a film theorist, educated at St. Hilda's College in Oxford, current professor at Birkbeck University in London. She previously taught at Bulmersh College, the London College of Printing, the University of East Anglia, and the British Film Institute. She has three honorary doctorates. So not real doctorates, but it is undeniable that she has put in a lot of work, as we can see from her publication list. So what can we tell about her best known work and something that, again, I say a lot of YouTubers, <laughs> something that we see a lot of YouTubers referencing, such as Anita Sarkeesian, back when, you know, she made videos on the regular. Um, what does the actual text say? Well, we know that the text was meant to make a political statement, so it's not a real reflection of actual reality. You know, she's pushing an agenda. Uh, she references Freud's psychoanalysis. In fact, it can be viewed as one of the basis of her views in that essay, along with her views in film theory stuff and feminism. But there is a problem with using Freud, because Freud's views are unfalsifiable and no longer the view to base one's life on, if you know what I mean. Especially during the 1970s, where Mulvey first wrote her essays, they knew at the time, uh, 
you know, Freud was, you know, an important note in psychology's history, but, you know, no one uses it during that time. Or at least no one credible, really. Which means to say that her essays are partially based on something that has weak evidence to begin with and is considered a scientific hypothesis that is outdated by her time when she first wrote it, which means it is certainly outdated in the 2020s. Now, you're, if you're thinking, oh, this is a mistake, haha, we got her. Slow your roll. Because this mistake is understandable. Because one, Mulvey is not a psychology major of any kind. Two, she is also not a science major of any kind. So it can be understood that she uses an outdated model of psychology. Science journalism isn't exactly cutting edge nowadays. It was probably a lot worse in the 1970s. So how should we think of her essay then? Well, if it isn't credible in terms of academics, like, you know, scholarly stuff and the brainy stuff, which she would readily agree, it's more of a political statement than anything she said so herself, uh, it would probably be best to take Mulvey's view as a springboard of questions to think about the media we consume. All right? We'll break Mulvey's essays down another time. Now, for some of you who are thinking, ha, you people who thought Mulvey was hot shit was wrong. You people, slow your roll. Uh, some of her biggest critics, John Berger and Braca Ettinger, known critics of Mulvey, aren't exactly the super scholarly type either. So, we need to take the views presented as not as the final nail to cement our views, but rather as something to expand our views. Like a tent pole, you know. You put the temple up, you can see a little bit more. You put up more temples, and maybe you'll see a bigger picture. So instead of thinking like, this is what it is because Mulvey said so, it should be more like, Mulvey said this, so what do I think it is? So next time, if someone tells you whether or not you should or shouldn't support a piece of art, like movies, pictures, literature, you should question why and why should I listen to you? If you made it this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you for watching Tabula Rasa. Make sure you do the YouTube thing. And once again, thank you for watching.